In this lecture, I want to show you probably what is one of the most popular questions that I get in regards to access, and that is how to create a cascading combo box. Meaning, when I choose an option from the first combo box or drop down, I want the options for the second combo box or drop downs to only be related to the first one. So here's what I mean by that. Let me switch over to another form. So here I have the different categories of everything that's sold in Northwind. So from the drop down, I can choose, for instance, cereal. And from this drop down, I can see all the products under the cereal category. Let me show you another one. If I go down to pasta, here are all the pastas that are sold by Northwind. If I go to baked goods, here are all the baked goods. So this is what's commonly referred to as a cascading combo box. And I'll show you how to create one. It actually doesn't take that long at all. So I have created a form called dropdowns. And right now there's actually not much at all in this form. I just have two combo boxes and they don't have any information in them right now. And as a matter of fact, if I head over to my design view, I can show you that the only thing that these two boxes have on them are names. There's no control source right now. There are no events associated with either of these two combo boxes. So I'm basically starting from scratch here. I just created a form and then added in my combo box from the controls dropdown. All right, so here's what I did. The first thing that I did was I had the top combo box point to all the categories that are in the products table. And again, I named this combo box category. And I'm going to switch over to data real quick. And for row source, I'll click on the build button. And that's going to open up my query builder. I'll bring show tables up a little bit. And here I'm looking for the products table. So I'll double click on products and then click on close. So in the products table, I'm going to choose category and I'll go ahead and run this. And now taking a look at this, I actually only have about 16 or 18 different categories, but here I'm seeing 46 because it's bringing out each different line item. Remember, there are multiple products in single categories. So what I want to do here is go back to the design view, make sure I'm looking at the property sheet for the entire query. And the fastest way to do that is to just click once in the gray area here. And that brings up the query property sheet. And I want to make sure that I go to unique values and change that from no to yes. All right, now if I run this again, I can see there are my unique 16 different categories. And that's exactly what I want. Perfect, so I'll head on back to design view and save this and close it. All right, so let me take a look at the form view real quick. And category, yep, it's showing all my categories. That's good so far. Next thing that I wanna do is I want to be able to pick a category and then the products show up for that category. So I'll switch back to design view. And now I'll go over to my products dropdown or products combo box. And again, with that selected, I want to go over to the property sheet. I want to find row source and click on the build button one more time. Again, I'll bring up show tables. I want to again find the products table and double click on it. Go ahead and close this. And I want to bring in both the product name and again, if I scroll down, I also want to bring in the category. All right. So this query right now would show me every product in every category. But what I want to do here is I want to filter the product by the category. So as far as category goes, my criteria here will be whatever is selected in the form. So only the products for the categories that are in the form will show up. So under criteria, I'll go ahead and type in forms and you can see here the forms collection pops up. I can just double click on that. Now I want to tell access which form. So I'm going to use my separator, which is the bang or exclamation point. And it is going to be the drop downs form. And then I want to tell it which field to look for. So one more time, my exclamation point, and it is the categories field. All right. So if I expand this, 
I want to see the product names, but my criteria here is only for the categories that are showing up under category in the drop downs form. All right, let me go ahead and save this and close it. And there's one more thing that I have to do. It actually works right now. Well, kind of. Let me show you. Let me go to my form view. And if I pick from here, say condiments, and click on the drop down, yep, there are all my condiments. But if I change this to, say, grains, and click on the drop down, it's still showing my condiments. So the last thing that I have to do here is to tell Access that when I change the category to requery this product's drop down. So I'll switch back over to my design view. I'll click on the category drop down. This time I want to go over to the event tab in my property sheet and I want to go to after update. So after the drop down has been updated with a new value, I'll click on the build button on the right hand side and I want to go to the code builder. So I'll select that and click on OK. All right, so there's only one line of code that I need to add in here. And that's the line that tells products to requery itself. And that's products, because that's again what I named that drop down, products dot requery. All right, I'll go ahead and save that and close it. I'll switch back over to my form view and I'll change it to say jams. Click on the drop down and there's my jams. I'll switch it now to sauces. Click on the drop down and there's sauces. All right, so this again is called a cascading combo box. You make a change in one combo box, click on a drop down and it makes a change in another.